Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. I am your host Gershwan and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about Slanesh Greater Demons as we get into Amniac the Golden. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k content every single day. And what we're going to do this video is explain a little bit of what a Keeper of Secrets is. And then we're going to talk about one of the greatest Keeper of Secrets, a greater demon of Slanesh known as Amniac the Golden. So with that said, let's get into 40 facts on Amniac the Golden. There is nothing so repulsive, yet charming as a greater demon known as a keeper of secrets, closest companion and servant of Slanash, and the leaders of his legion of excess. Covered in glamour and mind dulling musk, these monstrous demons mask their true nature with supernatural allure. Their powerful muscular bodies are always decked with jewels that hold the souls of their choicest victims, and their razor sharp claws are always decorated with brightly colored lacquer. A Keeper of Secrets is a highly intelligent creature, a being whose silver tongue and languished gestures belie its true power. It is claimed these are the most entrancing of all immortals, and that to look upon one is to surrender every last shred of self-will. A greater demon of Slanash knows the most intimate desires of every mortal being, and will use this horrific knowledge to gain power over its foes, seducing them with whispered promises they cannot hope to resist. Few who have encountered these demons can describe the shame of their desire, nor the lust for violence and depravity that overwhelms their rational sense in its presence. But the Keeper of Secrets is more than just a master of the psyche. On the field of battle, it is a graceful yet vicious killer that delights in the excessive wanton violence it unleashes. Pain and pleasure are irrevocably blended in the minds of Slaneshi greater demons, meaning that their blissful enjoyment of battle is unmatched in or outside of the warp. However, Keepers of Secrets are only used by Slanesh when all else has failed, for violence is but a small element of the Dark Prince's nature. When sheer, uncompromising force is the only course left, Slanesh tasks his greater demons to deliver it in excess. Keepers of Secrets take sadistic pleasure in all acts of killing and torture, considering excruciatingly painful deaths as another form of creative expression. They take delight in the interplay of explosions and horror, feeding upon the strong emotions triggered by mortals as they are torn apart. Their limbs are both delicate and hideously strong at the same time, moving blinding strikes as they eviscerate their opponents, spilling blood in pleasing patterns and spreading bodies apart in an exotic tapestry. The desperate pleas of mercy and the berserker battle cries of blood crazed warriors are like music to these greater demon's ears a delectable opera that honors Slanash. The ways of murder are many, and the Keeper of Secrets must explore them all. On the field of battle, the Keeper of Secrets are rarely encountered alone. They are invariably accompanied by swarms of prancing demonettes and ubiquitous lesser demons of the Prince of Chaos. They dance across the killing fields, singing the praise of their master and dealing death to the armies of men. Worst of all, the demonettes often avoid killing the enemy's greatest champions and leaders, slaying or corrupting lesser troops as a delectable foretaste of the glorious spectacle that is the coming of the Keeper of Secrets. The champions are taunted and teased by the demonettes until the battlefield is carpeted with the corpses of the twitching dead, and when the greater demon appears, the slaughter and corruption truly begins. As well as being peerless warriors, a Keeper of Secrets is said to possess arcane knowledge of many mystical arts. It is said that they can hear anything that is said anywhere in any dimension, and it is this ability that earned them the moniker of Keeper of Secrets. They have also been known to trade their knowledge for gifts of services. Using the secrets at their disposal, they are able to weave intricate spells of misdirection and mystification, leading the weak to their inevitable doom and sending the strong on fool's errands. A Keeper of Secrets can invade the thoughts and senses of its enemies, penetrating their every psychic defense, sending them visions of glory, stroking their egos, and stoking their innermost desires to lead the fools astray. To corrupt those warriors who are pure at heart and possess noble intent is the greatest of their skills, for they will inevitably turn every quest for glory into a sacrifice upon the altar of the Lord of Pleasure's perverse will. 
one of the greatest keeper of secrets encountered by the Imperium was the greater demon known as Amniac the Golden. The true origin of the keeper of secrets known as Amniac the Golden are basically unknown. Based on what few scraps of information the Inquisitorio investigators have been able to gather, during the latter century of the 39th millennium, the greater demon in Amniac was the scour of the unsurveyed Gowen Belt. He conspired to pull an entire star system into an anomalous region of the time-space continuum, where he could feed from the billions of souls held captive within the warp rift. In this way, no outside influence would be able to reach him or prevent him from carrying out his hideous plan. He would be able to consume these lost souls without fear of retribution from the might of the imperial forces of the Emperor of Mankind. Upon his ascension to Greater Demon, Amniac had assumed a truly gargantuan form, bestowed by his patron chaos god, Slanesh, as close to physical perfection as was possible. Amniac spoke with a voice like that of rolling thunder, his gaze of benevolence like the first rays of sun after an eternity of night. Amniac's charisma and presence was such that whoever saw this towering manifestation of perfection worship the greater demon as a god. The demonic hosts that followed in his wake were even perceived by the population of the Golwyn Belt as shining angels. So narcissistic was Amniac's aura of deception that those mortals that worshipped him traveled far and wide as his missionaries, spreading the good word of Amniac the Golden and his benevolent teachings of harmony and tolerance. The favor held by Amniac with his patron Slanesh instilled more and more conversion to his self-gratifying religion with each passing day. His favor with the ruinous powers enabled Amniac to attempt to bring his dark scheme to fruition. He sought to orchestrate a galaxy-wide mass sacrifice of such a magnitude that it would push the Goldwyn Belt across the skin of reality into the Keeper of Secrets' promised land. As Amniac reached the zenith of his power, every one of the planet's population on the belt adored their chosen god. This false faith became ingrained in the population over the centuries as his image graced every altar, grail, and banner on a hundred different worlds. Their faith in him was unshakable, for their god walked amongst them in the flesh once every generation. Appearing as a god incarnate, Amniac appeared to his adoring people as a benevolent deity, spreading joy and light, whereas in reality, he spread chaotic corruption and false hope. Under his demonic influence, he instructed his followers to construct vast golden colossi in his image at the heart of each city. These edifices took entire bloodlines many generations to complete. Their scale and perfection was as faithful a representation of Amniac as the finest sculptors of that day could create. Many hundreds died in their creation. This was all the better in the eyes of Amniac, for his ultimate plan neared its completion. Despite the remote location of the Goldwyn Belt, Amniac's burgeoning presence in the warp had not gone unnoticed by Imperial astropaths. The Inquisition soon launched an investigation by their most talented psychers to determine the nature of the threat possessed by Amniac. As soon as they discovered the dire threat represented by the Keeper of Secrets activities, the Imperium launched an Imperial fleet of a then unprecedented scale, dispatching them towards the Goldwyn system. Proceeding only days after the millennial celebration, Amniac would fragment his consciousness into countless parts in a great ritual, instilling a piece of himself within each of the golden colossi at the heart of their disciples' cities throughout the system. As his minions blindly ended their pathetic lives at the feet of these mighty titans, their forfeited souls would flow into each statue, granting Amniac the ability to exist within these hundreds of statues. With his golden titans, he would be able to achieve lasting immortality and indestructibility, feasting upon the captive populations of his pocket dimension in the warp, in a reign of terror that would last for an eternity. On the eve of the millennial celebration, Amniac's plans were in place, and it seemed nothing could stop his ascension to godhood. Around each of the golden titans were gathered millions of the faithful, chanting Amniac's name in unison and debasing themselves as they prepared to sacrifice themselves to his glory. Amniac's consciousness filtered into the statues as his vile chaotic ritual reached its climax, 
ready to gorge on the departing souls of his disciples. But the Imperial fleet had wasted no time. Such was the sheer scale of the Golden Idols that they could be detected from orbit, and above every one was an Imperial starship. At a prearranged signal, each of these craft launched a land strike upon the exact location of the Golden Colossi. Each of the sacrilegious structures was blown apart in an instant, the explosion killing every one of those who were faithful to Amniac's false religion. Only those few who had not bowed to Amniac's religious conversion of the Golden Belt remained alive. In a stroke, the Imperial fleet had not only obliterated Amniac for eternity, but also selectively destroyed virtually every adherent to his faith. The dawn of the 40th millennium did indeed see a new world order dawn upon the Golden Belt, as the Ecclesiarchy dispatched priests en masse to convert the confused and frightened survivors to the Imperial cult. After such a potent display of force, none dared question the might of the Emperor of Mankind. Today, the elite regiments of the Imperial Guard's Goldwind Strike Corps number over 200, and their planetary tithes regularly exceed even the most stringent demands of the Administratum. And those were 40 facts on Amniac the Golden. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to share it with your friends on Facebook or Reddit. It really helps out the channel when you do so. I know um, now that we've been improving on our video editing skills and our videos are a little more pleasing to the eyes, everybody over at Reddit has been awesome and encouraging. Um, you guys really like these new awesome videos. So if you post, if you post this on Reddit, thank you ahead of time. Um, and yeah. If you guys have any other suggestions for other topics of Warhammer 40k that you guys would like us to cover, just comment down below. And um, stay tuned because we're getting towards the end of the month, which means giveaways. Um, see you tomorrow. This is Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>